When the Xbox Series S was initially announced, I was pretty excited for it. I thought the concept of a lower priced next gen console would be great, especially since I was such a big fan of Game Pass. During the height of COVID and when stock was virtually non-existent, I saw one at my local Target and immediately bought it. $300 isn't cheap, but for a next gen console, I was willing to fork it over. I've been happy with my experience with a weak first party lineup from Microsoft and lower hardware inside compared to the Xbox Series X and PS5, it can be hard to grasp why this product exists. Hello world and all who inhabit it, it is I, the Great Sayoran, and even though I recommend the Xbox Series S to every casual player and family member I know, despite Xbox Series X and S being the best selling Xbox consoles ever, and regardless of the Series S creating a resurgence of the Xbox brand in Japan where it's weakest, I still see people asking why this product exists. See, in a vacuum, the Series S isn't that compelling. It's mainly with Game Pass that this fun box begins to shine. It has a slightly lower CPU clock and less powerful GPU. You're not getting as much performance from this device, and devs consistently call it a bottleneck for next gen game development, even if that usually gets debunked by more experienced or better managed dev teams. This device was getting blamed for so many performance issues on next gen titles, with Gotham Knights being the latest example. A random dev blamed the Series S for Gotham Knights 30 FPS Max on console. After the game came out, it was discovered by third party reviewers that the game was just not well optimized, leaning heavily on the CPU instead of the GPU. The game even played the most stable on Series S since it shares the same CPU as the Series X, but to get proper performance, the devs lowered the resolution and eliminate ray tracing from it. This is what people with the beefier consoles wanted them to do so that the more powerful hardware could have a 60 FPS mode, though Rocksteady said it wasn't possible. Now this isn't a Gotham Knights video, but I did want to point that out as a situation where the Series S just gets a lot of unwarranted hate. And for what? Being an affordable option in a world of inflating tech pricing? The Series S is still $300 and often on sale for $250 or has some sort of controller or packing game included at that $300 price point. To even touch ray tracing on a PC in a competent rig, you're looking at at least $800, and for the console side, the digital PS5 is there for $400, but apparently it's immoral to not have a disk drive. Besides outliers, games on Series S usually run well enough and beyond for the casual eye. I play AAA and indie games alike on my Series S, both on my 75-inch 4K TV and my 1080p 144Hz gaming monitor. This machine can game and do it well, and is usually up to the individual dev teams to optimize the game and make the proper judgments that won't affect the more casual audience. I think this console can manage 60 FPS gaming in every game that the Series X and PS5 can. And that should really be the standard at this point. More on that later. Performance aside, I want to mention the design of the Series S. It's sleek, it's minimal, and it can easily be placed in an entertainment center without one, blocking the very hot air coming from the device, and two, looking like a complete eyesore like the PS5 and Xbox Series X sometimes can. It's borderline portable. My Switch isn't as long as the Series S, but once I put on my grip, it's just as long, albeit not as wide. I really dig the all white as I think it really adds to the minimalistic design. The black accent does look like a drive through speaker though. The Xbox engineering team did a fantastic job fitting all of this into a small package. I don't want this to seem like all butterflies and rainbows though. I do have some gripes with the Series S two years in. I know I just praised this performance, but now I'm going to criticize some parts of it. I think the Series S does a great job with 1080p gaming. Not many people really need 4K, and if you are one of those people, you probably don't care about the Series S at all and sprung for the Series X or PS5. I do find it kind of annoying that some games just can't hit 1080p 60, as that to me is where this device could really shine. I don't want to say it's all on the device developers as I've heard that Xbox doesn't have a Series S specific development kit. They instead put a Series S mode on an Xbox Series X development kit. This makes it essentially the same thing, but it might have been worth the effort to make a specific Series S development kit. This can ensure that developers can adequately optimize their games for Series S as that seems to be the device that Xbox is pushing the most this generation. I also don't like the all digital aspect of it, though I understand why it's there. Platform holders make way more money from digital games than they do physical games. So honestly, they really want you to buy digital. This helps Xbox sell the Series S at a lower price point and recoup those funds with the digital games that you're buying. Also, used digital games don't exist, so you're either buying this game at full retail price or at a very controlled discount. I would have liked to have seen the cheaper device have an even cheaper way to play games besides the Xbox storefront and Xbox Game Pass. Once I got a PC, I personally stopped playing my Series S as much since I had Game Pass on it, and it's just more convenient to play games and create content on the same machine. If the Series S had a disk drive, I could have more used physical games that were either too expensive on the digital PlayStation storefront or just weren't on Game Pass. But once again, 
I get it. My biggest gripe is that Xbox in general just doesn't have any must play games out right now. Games that'll make people go out and buy an Xbox Series X or S. Though Xbox is probably the platform I give the most money to besides Nintendo. I pay for Game Pass Ultimate, so the amount of revenue I give to Xbox is more than a few exclusives I'll buy on PS5 or the couple sales I'll catch on Steam for PC. Game Pass is such a no-brainer and paired with the Series S, it's even more of a deal. Recently, Phil Spencer revealed that Game Pass is profitable and around 15% of their current games revenue. If their messy acquisition of Activision Blizzard goes through and they add those titles, I'm sure that revenue will spike due to the surge of new subscribers. New subscribers who want to play Call of Duty with a low monthly subscription paired with a cheap alternative to the beastly Series X. Phil Spencer also revealed that he knows Xbox is lacking games, but assured fans that games are coming in 2023. Games like Redfall, Forza Motorsport, and Starfield are looking to be some heavy hitters, and yeah, it's about time. I love the Xbox brand, and I'm loving the gamer-focused approach this generation. These companies tend to be more humble after seeing their sales not be as strong compared to the competition. Xbox has had a slow start and it is time for them to wake up. But regardless of all that, I still think the Series S is a great deal. In my specific use case, I see the Series S as a companion device to my PS5 and PC. I use it for Xbox Game Pass and the small size makes it great for when I want to travel but not lug around my gigantic PS5. It's a very cheap entry point to the Xbox ecosystem and though I may not use this device specifically as the casual market will, I still think it's an amazing buy and have no problem recommending this to the yearly Call of Duty, Madden, and 2K players. Because with Game Pass, there's an additional level of variety that these games gamers may not usually get on other platforms. So yeah, that's why the Series S exists. It plays games well and the lower price point will get Game Pass into more households than the Series X ever could. And it's still one of my favorite pieces of gaming tech to come out in the last two years. Do you disagree? Let me know down below. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.